Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. I'm going to read more of this book, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution by uh, Tamplin and Goffman. And uh, we're at chapter 4. We're on page 46. And I think I'll try to read without my glasses. Page 46, subtitle, Do We Really Need More Power? What then is the fundamental question involved in the electrical power industry? It is, why more power? This question has not publicly been discussed until very recently. A flat and unqualified statement that power needs are doubling every eight years is not sufficient. To accept this statement without question is to accept and endorse the notion that electrical power consumption is a desirable end in itself. Today, when environmental questions are paramount, it becomes necessary to question the basis for all intrusions on the environment. We do not know that we need more power. The population of the United States increases at about 1% per year. It is certainly not obvious that a population increase of 1% per year demands an increased power consumption of about 10% a year. It is manifestly not obvious that power demands are equivalent to power needs. How is the power to be used? Our utility friends advertise the use of power for lighting hospital operating rooms, running audiovisual aid equipment in elementary schools, making possible stereo recordings of Brahms and Beethoven, and a host of other culturally interesting uses. It is highly unlikely that these, use, that these uses account for a significant fraction of the present or projected power use. If we look closely, we will probably find that the Pacific Northwest needs that the Pacific Northwest needs more power to operate aluminum smelters in order to meet the growing need for beer, for beer cans and TV dinner trays. We must face the unfortunate fact that power consumption today does not correlate with the nebulous standard of living. Power consumption is correlating with the production of garbage and the decline in the quality of the environment. Wow, let me read that again. Power consumption is correlating with the production of garbage and the decline in the quality of the environment. My cat is scratching. Hold on, you guys. Sorry about that. She wouldn't have stopped, so had to do that. Americans have long recognized and taken pride in the beauty of their country and the nature of their democratic society. Beginning with the presidency of Theodore Roosevelt, we began to recognize that unless we change our course of action, beauty would not persist. This was the beginning of conservation as a national policy in the United States. This represented a manifestation of the moral attitude of the United States citizens concerning their desire to preserve this great land for future generations. Our efforts in the conservation field have always left a gap between action taken and action needed. This gap has grown so that we now have a great awareness of an impending environmental crisis. Well, actually, this was written in 1970. Fast forward to today, we are actually in an environmental crisis. And guys like Paul Ryan need to wake up and stop being selfish bastards. Mm -hmm. Saving the Earth for Future Generations Conservation of our environment as a worthwhile national goal is supported by the overwhelming majority of our citizens today. This, this opinion still has its roots in the moral desire to preserve the world for future generations. 
It's ma ma major adversary. I'm sorry. It's major adversary has been the belief of the omnipotence of science and technology. Considering the rapidly deteriora deteriorating environment, one might hope this belief is losing ground. By an accident of history, this growing awareness of the deterioration of our environment is occurring simultaneously with the rapid growth of the nuclear industry, an industry that simultaneously offers the hope and the ultimate peril for future generations. Well, how do you offer hope and ultimate peril in the same sentence? <sighs> the radiation emitted by the nuclear industry can influence the genetic makeup of any future generations. It asks the questions, will your grandchildren's be genes be fit for your great-grandchildren's to wear? This is really the ultimate in moral decisions. Considering the morality of the great majority of the United States citizens, we doubt if they would accept anything other than the smallest possible change in their gene pool. We firmly believe that their morality would cause them to vote for a doubling of their electrical power cost rather than suffer a significant genetic change. At the very least, we think their morality should be given a chance at the ballot box. Furthermore, we feel that they should be fully informed on the facts and assumptions so they can make this judgment. They are not, as many would imply, too stupid to do it. If they are, our democratic system is a fraud, and this we simply do not believe. So I'm going to end here and make another little quick video. I'm going to pursue to read the finish up this chapter tonight. So I'll talk to you guys in a minute. Ciao, you guys. Oh, where are we at? We are ending on page 48. I guess we didn't get that far, but I there's only a couple pages. I, I did it before, and it was like 20 minutes long. That's too long. So... I'll see you in a minute. Ciao.